Andre Way with just released once again. Come to just uh, talk about some things that's taking place. Sun to going down, beautiful. Ain't as hot. Nice breeze. Yeah, this is the neighborhood, 2700 block, Alameda Plaza. Park is all the way down that way. Probably can see the lights on down there. It used to be a time when, right now, that park, you'll see so many people in that park. Guys squatting down, shooting dice. Big old circle. Used to be some neighborhood. Rocking and rolling in this old neighborhood. And it's still kind of dangerous. Some shooting going on earlier. I don't know what it's about. But it was up there where I don't hang out no anymore. I cannot hang out and I cannot be about it. Because I can't afford it. But this is it's a glorious day in the neighborhood once again. Still freedom, free at last, free at last. Oh Lord, I'm free at last. Just got through talking to my brother. He on Styles. They racking them up right now and they're short of officers. That's what happens when you when you go to find all officers. The officers are getting fired. When I was on Styles, 85% of the officers was females and 75% of them was all in the game. And I mean in the game. When I say in the game, them women was about it. They was bringing it in. They was bringing it in. I remember when I was, I was dealing with this one guy, and he had a female officer. And uh, when I say she was a beast, he, was, he had been doing it so long and making so much money that they could never bust him. So the warden that came over there, Warden Wallace, Warden and Major Masters, they come out from McConnell Unit. I, I was on McConnell Unit with them when they was lieutenants and captains. And they, they came up in the ranks. And when they came to Styles, I mean, they, they was like the jump out boys. They, they, they was like city under siege up over there. They thought they was in the streets. I mean, I mean, you we be all in the day room, and when I say everybody practically had a phone, didn't hardly nobody go to chow. We used to buy burgers. A burger used to cost two dollars, and you just put an order in. You just put an order in. If you got a female, you got an officer, male or female, you can just have them to bring you something. To Bring you something to eat, bring you something from the free world. But uh, man, when I say this woman was a beast, wasn't nothing like her. I remember she told me one day, she say, she say, Andre, she say, when you're talking to them females, tell them that you'll give them 2200 for eight days. I say, 2200 for eight days? She said, yeah. And see, $2,200 for eight days, and all you want them to do is bring some balka in. Shit, the warden to try that. And it was so easy because them females, they was coming up out of Louisiana. And, and they weren't coming in there for no love affairs. They was trying to come in there for them green dots they was in about. I mean, and I tell you that they was... It was on like Donkey Kong. I mean, they would, they, you be trying to rap, and they would just, they'd cut the conversation out and say, man, what's up with that green dots? What's up with them, them, them green dots? And all you had to do is had enough skill or knew somebody that was, that was in the game. And there it was. It wasn't nothing for me to, so, so, that's all I, them the only kind of cases I was getting. Cold 20s. And solicit an officer. And I ain't had nothing but about three of those. But man, I was, I would get out there. I would get out there. Because when I got to the style unit, I never, I thought East Ham was something else. But when I got to Styles unit, I never, wasn't even ready for that. Man, they were talking about we were drinking wine and stuff, we were drinking alcohol. 
Everclear. Gin and juice. Whatever we order. Eating shrimp. Eating whatever. Lobsters. Burgers on the regular. Pizza. Free world. Every day. For over a year. Until they finally. They shipped the guy. Because they could never bust him. So they just put him on the chain. And on a daily basis. I used to deal with over. $900 to $1,100 worth of green dots on a daily basis. I used to sell cans of buglers. I used to sell telephones. I used to sell weed. And I used to sell cocaine. On a daily basis. And when I tell you my best customers was the homosexuals. Them boys used to get that money. And you know what was so surprising of them is that the Spanish guys, they loved the telephones. Them guys would pay up to a thousand dollars for an Akia. Just for a Kia phone, plain. Just to be able to but you needed a you needed your own phone to really conduct business. On the way dealing with green dots. You need those. You need the telephones. Because if you somebody give you a five hundred dollar green dot, you want to be able to take that money off of that green dot and put it on your reloadable card. Because they they'll be you be done gave them the product and they gave you that green dot and and went and took the money off of that and swear to God, man, my mama, man, my mama, my mama ain't gonna, man, my mama them ain't gonna play and all the time. It be them playing. Seen many dudes get hurt behind green dots. And what's so killing about it is that the system didn't even know about the green dots. I used to put my green dots in my loaves of bread. I used to stash all my green dot numbers in my loaves of bread. And they had a special shakedown team that used to come, their regional team, shakedown team. And they would come. And this one night, I was on Meet Them Cussing, man, and I'll tell you, I was supplying all the B side. And that was seven building and eight building. And sometime I was supplying A side because the officer that I had was the female of the guy that got transferred and she really didn't mess with a lot of people because she didn't trust a lot of people and I was just one of the guys that she trusted and I go to insulin every day so it was easy for me to go pick up my cans because basically that's what a lot of people thought she dealt with if she gave an officer a package. Let's say one of the women that that's making the 2200. Well, they used to compress the cans of buglers and the pounds of weed. They'll compress them. The officer think they bring in just tobacco. But all the time, it's probably two ounces of powder, 500 X pills. All compressed inside the tobacco, and now and they they, they don't want to come. They don't want it. They'll go anywhere. The officer will go anywhere and pick up the package. Give them two hundred dollars to go pick up the package from Houston, and they'll get two hundred there and two hundred back, and plus they're getting twenty two hundred off the rip for bringing packages inside the the place. So they was making good money. Walking around now, nails did, eyelashes did, hair whipped up, clothes on press. Oh, they looking totally different. It was on like Donkey Kong on Styles. And and Darrington. Darrington was so cold, they had to send some some undercover laws and that would work. It was that's how that's how Live it was, but style was the most country band u uh, unit in the United States of its time. It was on. Money was to be made, 
it was hard to do right. It was hard to do right. It was hard to let put everything out and say I quit. It was just hard. But if you wanted your freedom, and that's what was asked to me. The guy asked me one day. He said, Dre, man, you've been gone a long time, man. What's more important? This penitentiary stuff or your freedom? He asked me that. He said, think about it, man. You've been gone a long time, man. This ain't nothing. He said, they having money in the world, man. This ain't no money. He said, go home. I laid it down. I put it down. I let it go. That penitentiary glory, that penitentiary stress. I stayed stressed out. I stayed stressed out sitting up there with all them cans and having to do this and package this and do that, man. I was stressed out. I let it go. I gave it up. And what I got, I got freedom. Andre Wade with Just Release. I'll be back. <laughs>